This week on Explore the Outdoors, we travel to La Crosse, Wisconsin, where we check out the La Crosse Segway Tours. All right, so go ahead and uh, center your feet between the front and the back of the handlebar, or the mats, grab the handlebars as you step on. A couple things to keep in mind when you first get started, it will be easier just to continue to keep riding, like towards the end of the parking lot, but it's, you're not gonna learn the machine as quickly as if you start and stop every so often. Okay. The more times you do that, the, the quicker you're gonna pick it up. Um, another thing, people think that um, if, okay. I don't <laughs> if I don't remind them, you don't actually have an actual accelerator, so there's like there's no way to run me over or anything like that. As long as I have my hand on the handlebar, I have complete control of your machine, so you can't run me over. Um, but we're gonna start off by just doing a couple of stop starts and stops. Um, so go ahead and just lead in towards me. It doesn't take a lot to get us started. <laughs> there you go. And we're gonna come to a, our first stop just by extending those arms and leaning back on those heels. Yep, there you go, looks good. And then slightly forward, so we don't keep going backwards. A little bit more. There we go. This is nerve-wracking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna come to another stop. It'll be, you'll pick it up really quick. All right, it's a little bit more forward. We're gonna do our first left-hand turn, so just go ahead and pull that handlebar to the left here for me. All right, and I'm gonna be walking right in front of you. <laughs> I'm gonna have you just kind of stop and start on your, at your own pace. So go ahead and come to your first stop. Yep, and then forward again, a little bit more. <laughs> and the more times you do that, the less shaky it will be. Okay. So, there you go. Another stop whenever you're ready. Looks good, slightly forward. Yeah, make sure you remember the turning is yeah. back and forth. Oh yeah, I forgot about that camera yeah. stand there. All right, give me another turn here once you're ready. There you go, then forward again. So tell me a little bit about the Lacrosse Segway Tours. This is our fifth season, going into our fifth season here. Uh, we offer three different guided tours. We have uh, a couple different hour and a half tours and then a 45 minute tour plus the training time. Um, and so we're in Riverside Park right now. This is kind of the, the one place that we go for all three tours. Um, our Pettibone Park tour is our most popular. We go through, so we start off, we do all the training and everything during the season in Riverside Park. Um, and we go through Riverside Park along the riverfront here. We cross over the Mississippi, over both the bridges, and then um, we go through Pettibone Park, ride through all of there, and then come back on the opposite bridge touch on a little bit of the downtown area and then head back. Um, that one's more geared towards people that just want to ride and don't necessarily care about the history or information, things like that. Um, people that do, you know, want to see or learn a little bit more of history, you know, and information would, would do our River City Tour. That one we, we actually go through the bike trails that run through the marsh, the university area, the residential historic district, the downtown area, and then Riverside Park. So we kind of just make a big loop around the city. Um, and then we do have a shortened version of the Pettibone Park Tour where we, it's half as long, we get across the bridge and then take a picture and come back, so. What made you decide to start the tours? I, I always knew I wanted to start my own business and I thought that was, a, you know, doable, like first business to, to start. Um, I had done, I, I had done a tour in Florida for the first time and there was three different tour companies in the Tampa area at the time there and there was no this is like during the holiday like during uh, Christmas time um, there was no openings unfortunately at, or at least at the time and then there was a cancellation so they called us we were able to get in um, so I knew there was a you know like it was a fun activity if they were booked up um, and there was a demand for it um, and I I basically knew by the time I was done, like I had the route planned in my head, kind of what, what I wanted to do for the Pettibone Park Tour. How hard is it to ride a Segway? Because I know I don't have the balance or expertise anyway to ride a Segway, but how hard is it? Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> got it. <laughs> Let's go. So yeah, that's that's exactly what everybody says. Like when we drive, when we ride past people, they're like, oh yeah, I would never be able to do that. And that's like, you know, everybody thinks that. Um, but people don't realize they're actually self-balancing. <laughs> so it's not a matter of figuring out how to balance it. It does that for you. Um, it's a matter of figuring out how to operate. And they're actually very easy to learn how to ride. They're very intuitive. They take the average person two or three minutes how to, you know, to get the hang of it um, before, you know, they get pretty comfortable. So, and we, all together, like our training is probably 10 to 15 minutes. And um, 
I mean, yeah, I've over the course of five, well, this will be the fifth year, there's been one person that refused to try and one other person that was, she was probably in her 90s and just didn't feel comfortable after the training and I didn't either. So, I mean, I can, like, we have a, we'll train you or, you know, train you, but you, you can do it guaranteed or your money back. How can they book a Segway tour? So if you just Google lacrosse Segway tours or go to lacrossesegwaytours.com, that's, um, you can book it online. That's how most people do it. Otherwise, you can give us a call at 608-790-5419 um, and I'll book the tour over the phone with you. So. How often do you guys do tours? Uh, we, we have three scheduled, well, depends on the day, um, three scheduled tours per day. And then we do have an additional sunset tour, which is offered two hours before sunset on Fridays and Saturdays. Um, and then there's times where I do like tours in between, like when we're really busy. Um, so like five or six times a day at the most. And I mean, it, it all depends, you know, it's weather dependent kind of an activity. How big of a group can you take on a tour? Uh, we can do up to 10 people at a time. We, I usually have a second tour guide if we have larger groups like that, just for safety concerns and um, ease of training. Like when you have that many people, it takes a little bit longer to train that many people. So we usually have two, two tour guides when we have bigger groups like that. But we'll do groups from anywhere as little as one person that's in town uh, on business or you know whatever, um, all the way up to, to 10. So. And what is the age range? 12 years old and 100 pounds. Um, there's no upper limit. Um, basically, as, as long as, as you can take a step up onto a stair without assistance and you can stand for an extended period of, of time, you can ride a Segway. What is the pricing for the Segway tours? Um, it depends on, so I have kind of like a tiered pricing. Um, so the more people you have in your group, the cheaper it is per person is the way it works. And then it also depends if you do you know, one of the hour and a half tours or the 45 minute tour. Um, but it ranges anywhere from $49 per person to $69 per person. Um, like our, if you had, uh, if you're doing one of the hour and a half tours, it's for one or two people, it's 69 per person. If you have three or four, it's 64. If you have five or more, it's 59. Um, and to compare the prices to like Door County and, and uh, Twin Cities, they're about $85, $90 per person. So it's, it is an expensive activity. It's comparatively, like we have the lowest prices from what I could tell, like in basically in the tri-state area. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's an expensive activity, but it's, they're $7,000 a piece. The insurance is quite expensive. It's a very short season. Um, I mean, it's very weather dependent. So I mean, like you have to, you definitely have to capitalize on the opportunities when they're presented because most people, are coming from two, three hours away. Um, very few of our customers are locals. So like, you know, they're here for a very short time. They have a very like, you know, small window that they have other stuff planned. And a lot of times people don't book it ahead of time just because they want to see what the weather's going to do first. Obviously you don't want to do it if it's going to rain or if it's going to be cold or whatever. Um, and yeah, I mean, it tends to be like if, you know, if you can't accommodate them right then and there, then, you know, it, it's kind of lost at that point. So, so yeah, that's what I've kind of learned over the years. What is some <laughs> of the comments that you can recall about when people are on the segways and taking the tour? Um, I mean, people really just have a, a blast when they do it. It's, it's usually the highlight of their, their trip when they're here. Um, I mean, it's just a really fun activity, um, kind of unexpected people. They, I mean, they kind of look dorky, honestly, um, but they're, they're, it's unlike anything else you've ever done. It's hard to explain if you've never done it before. I mean, you can go, you can cover a lot more ground than you could walking and you can go places you can't with a car. Um, and you can kind of get a local's perspective on different events and different things to do, places to eat, as opposed to just kind of, you know, basing it on reviews or just randomly guessing. What is your guys' Segway season? It's usually like April through October, but it really does, it's, I mean, it's been a pretty slow season so far with how, how much rain we got and Petty Bowen Park being underwater for a good chunk of the start of the season. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, and, and then on the tail end of it, it depends on how quickly it gets cold. You know, if it's, if there's any snow on the ground, it, we're not gonna do tours. They're not made to, to handle snow, so um, yeah. I mean, but June, July, August is really the only, the busier months. 
I also own and operate lacrosse escape room, um, which is just a few blocks from here. It's 319 Main Street right next to Addy Cakes. Um, it's in the old historic Batavian Bank building. And we are currently running four different rooms. We have a bank heist that, re that takes place in the original vault from back in 1888. And then we have uh, our newest room is a prison break room. We have a deserted island room and serial killer room. And how do you come up with those different rooms? Um, I, it dep like, depends on the room. Um, I can buy kind of the idea of like how one puzzle flows to the next throughout the room from somebody that sells to owners. And then I usually use, well, I usually only use about half or less of what they give me. And then I, I incorporate my own ideas and I change things. Um, I, the one room I've done completely on my own, the deserted island room, that's been a really popular room. So it shows through a lot of times like I've bought from other people that they're not, you know, the greatest. Um, so it's, you know, a lot of times better to, to use your own ideas and implement things. If you do both activities, we give a 10% discount. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, we had somebody that just kind of, like I said, on a whim, they, they were at the trailer that we operate out of and wanted to go right then and there. They were here for the dart tournament. Um, and I wasn't able to get my tour guide in time, so I just, you know, ran down here quick. Um, they did that and I kind of threw that in there and they, like, oh yeah, I think that'll be fun too. Um, and they did both and ha like half the group liked this escape room better, half the group liked the Segway tours better. All right, you ready to head out? I think so. All right, let's go. Oh god, going downhill. <laughs> So I would just say like even if you have lived here your whole life it's still definitely something that you should try it's kind of like a bucket list item like um, I mean even if you're not gonna learn anything like if, if you've lived here it's still it's still a lot of fun and definitely worth checking out so thank you again that was a lot of fun once again where can people go to sign up um, they can go onto our website lacrossesegwaytours.com or they can give me a call um, and get the booking set up over the phone all right Make sure you guys do that because I had a lot of fun. Even invite me, I'll go again. I mean, <laughs> let's do it again. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next segment of Explore the Outdoors. If you don't know what Property Brothers buying and selling is, where have you been all your life? I handle house hunt. Jonathan handles design. No! It's not good, we're gonna fix it, but it's messed up. It's not good. Oh! It takes two to tango. Come on in, this is your house.
All new Property Brothers buying and selling. Wednesday night at 9 on HGTV. Hi, I'm Melanie Messman, Advertising Account Executive at HBC. HBC offers local businesses the ability to place their advertising message into top-rated TV series, sports, and news programming, allowing your business to target viewers in 30 communities. With a locally produced TV commercial, we can show the audience what your business has to offer. Together, we can create an advertising message that brings new customers into your business. Call me to discuss how we can get your business on TV today. Welcome to the second part of this episode. We headed to Fountain City, Wisconsin to Kingstone. It's a gorgeous place that has all these stone features and even this beautiful chapel. Next to me is this ribbon tree where you can write down your prayers and intentions. And in October, they burn all the ribbons and release those prayers up to the heavens. You should come to Fountain City, Wisconsin and check this beautiful place out. Tell me a little bit about Kingstone. Okay, well, Kinstone is a megalithic, modern megalithic garden or sanctuary. And um, it's modern because it's made in modern times. It's megalithic because it has very large stones. That's what megalithic means. And it's a sanctuary because a lot of um, peaceful feelings are had here and people find it to be um, a place to come to become relaxed and calm. And what made you decide making one of these? So um, I decided I needed to have a stone circle in my life. I've visited many stone circles around the world. My favorites uh, being in Scotland on the island of Orkney and the island of Lewis. And um, I decided that instead of traveling all the time to see these beautiful stone places, which I've traveled quite a bit to see, I thought it would be great to have one in my own backyard and so when I started thinking about what to do with this piece of land and this piece of land I'm fourth generation on so it came through my family and I purchased it from my parents um, I decided I wanted to put a stone circle here and once I decided to do that and really went and looked for stone and picked out every stone by hand at quarries in, mostly in Minnesota a little in South Dakota um, more stones decided they wanted to come here with me. So um, after the stone circle was built, we stood several um, just standing stones. And then um, in subsequent years, we created more stone features here. So you'll find quite a few. Oh, I think I'm up to about 188 stones that have been brought here and mostly granite. And each one has their own story. Each one has its own story and how it got here, how it was selected, what it means now, where it's sitting. Yes, they're all intentionally set. Which one was your very first one? So the very first feature that we created here is the, the large stone circle. Um, I guess that's not quite true because we created the labyrinth at the same time and the labyrinth was actually completed um, about a week or a month prior to starting the stone circle. So the large stone circle was the first, but during that time, so that was October of 2011, and uh, we brought the stones here, or I brought the stones here uh, via truck. Uh, they were brought by semis from um, mostly central Minnesota, but also some from South Dakota. And um, we had a crane here to unload the stones and then um, put them in their places. We had excavator, we had people helping. And uh, that took only about 10 days to complete the stone circle the way it is right now. Everything kind of worked like clockwork. It's almost as if it wanted to be here. And um, so, and also during that 10 days, it wasn't just the, the large stone circle we set, but we also put um, what's known as the borderlands, which are stones that look like Minnesota and Wisconsin with the river running between them. And we put up Lancelot and Atlas, which have an equinox alignment. We put up the energy stones, which are in the line between this, the stone circle and the labyrinth. We put stones in below the labyrinth. Um, so there were a lot of things set during that same 10 day time frame. So if you have the right equipment and the right people, the right weather, a lot can get done in a short amount of time. And how many features do you have here on, it's 30 acres, right? Yeah, so um, that's a hard question because what is classified as a feature? So um, 
when I w started doing my open house planning this year, usually I put signs up at all the features to say what they are and let people read about them. I have 28 signs, but that doesn't mean they're all features. Some of them have to do with our permaculture um, implementations like our solar dehydrator and cob oven and our composting and raised beds. But most of them are um, either natural buildings or stone features here. So there's, there's quite a number and it, they're spread over about 13 acres, 14 acres. The rest of the land is woods. And so I haven't turned my attention to putting any standing stones in the woods at this point, but maybe someday in the future. And you guys have a chapel on, on the premises. Tell us a little bit about the chapel. So the chapel is a cordwood constructed building. So cordwood construction is a natural building style that is well suited to the Wisconsin climate. And so we've created this beautiful six-sided hexagonal building and it has a very steep roof and it's been thatched with um, Phragmites australis, which is a invasive water reed that is found in many waterways in the U.S. and it's recently um, in, the, in the Mississippi. And so we were able to take it out of the Tremplo Wildlife Refuge, something they wanted done anyway. So uh, we volunteered to remove um, this invasive species and stored it up for two years. You remove it in the winter. And then um, it was thatched onto the roof here by an Irish thatcher who lives in Cincinnati, Ohio. But the chapel itself is a place for quiet um, contemplation and meditation. And if you find yourself in the chapel and if you're showing um, photos of that, you will see that there is a story in the walls. When you walk in the door, you are in the middle of a story and it is the story of creation. And um, it's called the chapel of creation. And so you will see in the walls the sun and the moon and you will see um, herbs and flowers and dragonflies and a tree and a river and clouds and wind and you'll see fire all and the night sky blue and white um, bottles that make up a night sky and all of this is done with bottles that are put into the walls which is a part of a natural building kind of technique that you add some color into your building so it's really quite um, moving to go into the chapel. And then there's a centerpiece in the chapel that's called the, e, I call it the eternal flame, but it's really a piece of petrified wood that was gifted to me by a friend who has recently passed. And it's an, oh, a gentleman who built a place similar to Kinstone, someone that I've been highly influenced by, and his place is in Pennsylvania. It's called Columcile Megalith Park. And um, he sent this beautiful stone to be the center grounding stone in the chapel. And uh, then I had a special um, pedestal built for it with flames that hold it in place to kind of indicate that it is the eternal flame. And then the other thing you'll see in the chapel is this tree that has lots of little pieces of cloth tied to it and I call it the tree of intention and so anyone who comes into the chapel is welcome to take a, a fresh ribbon out of the basket that's there and write with a sharpie marker that's there some intention or prayer or thought that they have that they would like to um, offer to God, the universe, the divine, however you want to think about it. And then they tie it to this tree and then it's held there in the chapel all year until October 4th and on October 4th it's St. Francis of Assisi's feast day. Um, we use that day to remove all of the ribbons and burn them in a uh, ritual ceremony to release those intentions. And we um, kind of dedicated much of what the chapel story is to St. Francis of Assisi because the story in the walls is based on his Canticle of Creation or the Canticle of Brother Sun and Sister Moon. And copies of that poem are in the chapel that you can uh, look at and see how it reflects what's happening with the colorful designs in that building. Now I saw online you guys have quite a few events throughout your guys' uh, operating season, I'd like to say. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about those events. So um, we are open, first of all, May 1st through October 31st, um, every day, uh, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And people, it's kind of a self-serve self kind of thing. You come, you, get, you op open the gates, you put your money in the payment box, and you wander at will with a map that we provide. But we um, have done lots of different events over the course of our history. Since 2012, we started running classes for permaculture. And I've since backed off running 
permaculture classes so much and now moving more toward running retreats and more um, holistic health kind of events here, as well as concerts and celebrations for the, the um, major seasonal alignments like the equinoxes and the solstices. So this June, we have quite a few things coming up. We have a couple of different retreats. There's a Zen Buddhist retreat here. There is um, a true love experience, which is really um, a deep meditative experience. Uh, coming up, we have a concert in the Stone Circle on June 21st, which is the equina uh, sorry the summer solstice. It'll be at sunset, so we'll be playing um, uh, Peter Fippen and, and Robbie Crawford will be playing flute and singing bowls in the Stone Circle, and they'll play right till sunset, which will be beautiful. And um, we also have a kirtan experience, which I've not uh, really been to a kirtan concert before, but it's a Hindu-based ancient uh, Sanskrit chanting um, experience where you actually sing along with the performers. And so it should be also very meditative and, and um, a deep kind of spiritual sing singing experience. So I'm looking forward to that on the 28th of June. So lots of things in June. And I don't have as many lined up yet in July and August, but we're working on those things. How does somebody sign up for these events? Or can they just show up and sign up that day? So our events are all listed on our website and also on our Facebook page. And so if you are interested in coming to an event or attending something that is going on here, that's not just coming to see because the majority of people who come here are coming because of the attraction of the stones or the natural buildings and they just come whenever, any day of the week, um, any weekends, etc. But for events, you would sign up um, on our website and there's usually an event page for each event that's going on and you can uh, go to the main home page and then on the menu there's a section for events and classes and you just click there and click on the one you're interested in and it shows you how to get a ticket or, or whether it is ticketed or not. Most of them have a ticket but we do have a standing women's circle group that meets here every new moon so every month on the new moon between March and November we don't meet in the winter um, that's a free event that people just come to. So um, if you see the women's circles and you decide that's something you're interested in attending, you just come. And why do you think it's so important for somebody to come here and experience what you have to offer here? I think that, um, first of all, people come here because they are sort of attracted by what is this place? I, we don't know of a place like this in the U.S. or certainly not in the Midwest. Uh, I want to see what these stones are all about. I want to, what is this, what is going on? But when I think when they arrive here, they feel something tugging at them. They're, they're like, well, I feel something different. I feel like, wow, what, how did this place come to be? And so I think it's really important for people to be open when they come to a place like Kinstone to be inspired by what seems impossible and really um, maybe allow themselves the idea that some of the things that they've thought were impossible in their lives could really be possible. And so I think it's, um, it's just really important for people to be open and know that the land is here to transform it offers them a threshold to transformation. And so if life is change, we're all changing all the time. Um, but if we're open to that change, if we're open, open to transforming into the, in our best and highest selves, um, we're just, um, our path is that much easier. And I think that Kinstone is a place that encourages that in people silently. You don't even know what's happening and that you come there and you feel that. Thank you for joining me on today's episode. I enjoyed coming out to Kingston and Fountain City and exploring all the stone features and this beautiful chapel and the beautiful land that they have here to offer. I also enjoyed going to lacrosse on the Segway tours, which I cannot wait to go back and get on those Segways. So next time you're in the area and looking for something to do, check out these two places. Until next time, I'm Alyssa Kozak.